Hello again, everybody. Les East with Brian Alley Walsh, NewOrleans.com. We're up in the press box here on Sunday evening after another close victory by the Saints, 16 to 14 over the still winless Carolina Panthers. Uh, the Saints, with the victory, move to three and one and stay on pace with the Atlanta Falcons in the NFC South. The Falcons escaped with a similar 16-14 victory over San Francisco at the Georgia Dome. Uh, it appeared there for a while that the 49ers might help the Saints out, but uh, Atlanta came back with a late field goal of their own. So the Saints moved to three and one less. John Carney kicked three field goals. The Saints did just enough on offense and actually played pretty well on defense, except for a couple of big plays that resulted in touchdowns by the Panthers. Uh, to again move to three and one. Let's deal with the injuries first. There were some injuries that came out of this game. Well, yeah, they were uh, hit hard in the safety position. Roman Harper was inactive because of the hamstring injury. And then his replacement, Pearson Prelude, had what was described as a chest injury, did not return. And then his replacement, Chris Reese, uh, injured his right shoulder, did not return. So they were down to their last two safeties. They're playing Malcolm Jenkins and, and Usama Young, who had made one of the biggest plays of the game. But you talked to Chris Reese and got a, a pretty good handle on what his situation was. Yeah, Chris uh, had a nasty uh, injury to his right shoulder. And uh, the way he described it, it sounds like a separation. It actually separated and had to be popped back in on the field by team doctors, which he, he uh, uh, gave a very uh, descriptive, uh, detailed out, uh, idea of what it was like for him down on the field, which you can read about later on our website. Uh, but, uh, you know, it could be, his could be, the, uh, at least the ones that we know of less, could be the lengthiest. He could be out a while with that kind of injury. And so they're, they went into the game thin as it was with uh, Roman Harper out because of a hamstring injury. So they were down, and Lee Torrance was released to make room on the 53-man uh, roster for running back to Sean Wynn. So they have got to kind of go back and regroup in the secondary next week. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, it, it, we'll, we'll find out about Pearson Prelo, and this not only affects him in the secondary, but those are the two, two of their better coverage guys on special teams with Prelo and Reese. Uh, in fact, they gave up a big kickoff return after the two of them were hurt. So they're going to have a lot of decisions to make in the secondary this week. And just to follow up, you know, the Panthers were on the fringe of field goal range to try and win this game at the end, which John Casey seems to have done about uh, 10 times against this team over his career. And you saw him a young burst through the line, dropped D'Angelo Williams for a loss that pushed them out of field goal range. And then I believe it was Malcolm Jenkins got a sack after that and they eventually turned it over and down. So Usama Young was huge coming in because of the injuries and then making maybe the biggest defensive play of the game. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, like you said, Malcolm Jenkins also had a sack right after the, the uh, four-yard loss uh, tackled by, by uh, Usama Young. So those big, big plays really kind of salted away for the Saints at the very end there. Again, we mentioned John Carney kicked three field goals, subbing for Garrett Hartley, actually replacing Garrett Hartley on the active roster today. Looked solid as a rock. Looked like he'd never been away from this team. Uh, also, you know, Liddell Betts and Chris Ivory teamed to run for, I think, 114 yards combined, I believe, or something, 117 yards in the absence of Pierre Thomas. So. Uh, I've compared it to the replacement players, just the guys we mentioned, the two running backs, John Carney, Usama Young. These are guys that stepped up big today, and if they had not, you might be looking at a 2-2 two and two record here for the Saints uh, after the first quarter of the season. Yeah, it was another life and death game, which all four of them have been uh, to this point. We, we should mention that uh, Chris Ivory did lose a fumble for the second consecutive week, so that's a little bit of a concern um, for the coaching staff as they go forward with this running back by committee while uh, Pierre Thomas and Reggie Bush were sidelined. Also, John Carney made field goals of 32-32 and then the 25-yarder to win it. 
Also, they changed holders today, and they changed Daniel instead of Thomas Morstead. Sean Payton kind of downplayed that, so he wanted to see what Chase Daniel could do. There's nothing against Thomas Morstead, but it also freed him up to concentrate on kickoffs and punts. So whether or not Morstead, being a rookie holder, had any effect on Garrett Hartley's problems, um, they've not indicated that at all. But uh, it was interesting to note they did make that change along with the place kicker. And uh, so they'll, they head west now to Arizona next Sunday, Les. Uh, Arizona's getting waxed by San Diego. San Diego as we speak. I think the Chargers are putting the finishing touches on a wax job out there in the desert. And uh, I think the Saints are heading, well, the Saints are heading out there next Sunday. Three o'clock local kick, uh, local kick in New Orleans. One o'clock out there. And uh, well, I'll be out there. To, uh, to chronicle what hoped to be another victory and another uh, another uh, important win, I guess, uh, in, in the NFC for the Saints. So for Les East, I'm Brian Alley Walsh. Please, please stay tuned to our website throughout the rest of the evening and into tomorrow for updated stories from both Les and I. And we'll see you next time. Aloha, everybody.